Okay, here we are uh, working on the redesigned SAT. Uh, this is uh, section number three, math, no calculator. Okay, on Saturday afternoon, Armand sent M text messages each hour for five hours, and Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for four hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Armand and Tyrone on Saturday afternoon? Okay, so you know one of the first things you might want to isolate is the question itself. The question itself here is the total number of messages. Okay, so both messages put together. Um, now the second thing we notice here is that we have variables in the answer choices. Uh, I guess this isn't too much different than the old SAT because this is a strategy that you could use a lot for the old SAT and it looks like you can use it for the new SAT as well. Uh, so if you have variables in your answer choices, what that means is you can pick values for those variables. So what we notice here is the variables that we are given, uh, if you're confused about what variables are, they're numbers that represent numbers that could vary, hence the name. Uh, they are characterized as lowercase letters. So in this case, M and P are our variables. So basically what I'm trying to say here is if M and P are in all the answer choices, then you can make M and P whatever you want to make them. Right? Um, so I recommend making them something relatively simple, right? Uh, so let's say that uh, Armand sent uh, three text messages each hour for five hours, right? So if you do, if you sent three text messages an hour for five hours, that's going to be 15, right? And let's say that uh, Tyrone uh, sent six text messages each hour for four hours. So six times four is twenty-four. Now you notice I picked five and six, or excuse me, I picked three and uh, six, and that's because those numbers didn't really show up in the question. I want to pick easy numbers, but I don't necessarily want to pick numbers that are already in the question uh, because that might create confusion or perhaps even a double answer. So anyway, fifteen plus twenty-four. 5 plus 4 is 9, 1 plus 2 is 3, so the answer is 39. Now, of course, none of these answers are going to say 39, but one of them, when you put in the fact that we chose m equals 3, and don't forget to label these things, so m equals 3 and uh, p equals 6, these are our variables. So when we take m equals 3 and p equals 6 and we put them into the answer choices, right? only one of them is going to spit out the answer 39, right? So m equals 3, p equals 6, we could think of this as our, uh, our input. And uh, 39 we can think of as our output. So if we put in 3 and 6, do we get out 39? Uh, well, it doesn't look like either of these are going to work. They're going to be way too big. Uh, so let's try C and D. Uh, 5M plus 4P. OK, 5M would be 15. 4P would be 24. All right. Um, so 15 plus 24, that's exactly what we got originally, right? Um, and then 4m plus 5p, so 4m would be 12, and 5p would be 30, right? So 4m plus 5p, uh, well, that would be 42, so our answer here is C.